So to get started with Capistrano, what you need to do is you need to run the capify command on the current directory or on the directory that your your stuff is in. So if you uh, do the bundle exec, I'm just doing that because I included it in my gem file and I've already bundle installed. So anyway, if you look here, you have two files that it creates. It creates deploy.rb and the cap file. Now the cap file just refers to deploy.rb, so that's where the action is. So let's go ahead and specify the name of our application. Um, we'll call it rubyfreelancers.com since that's what this uh, application is going to be. Um, the repository, I've just copied and pasted that straight out of GitHub. Uh, the SCM is a source control manager, so that's Git. And then each of these, we're just going to point to um, our domain, rubyfreelancers.com. Um, now I want to, while I have a minute, let you know that there are a few things here that I'm not going to cover. I'm not going to show you how to set things up with... Uh, um, Oh, I'm blanking with Passenger, Fusion Passenger. Um, and I'm also not going to show you things like symlinking certain config files and things like that. You'll have to figure that out on your own. But I am going to show you how to create a task and uh, make it execute after uh, the deploy occurs. So um, anyway, we'll go down here. One thing that I did here is I uh, uncommented this uh, deploy start, stop, and restart. And the reason that I did that is because I actually uh, need it to stop and start the server and this does things for passenger. So anyway, let's go back up. There are a few other things that we need to set up. One is, is you want to set the user. Um, I'm using a user called deploy. I've already set that up on my server. Um, I, I recommend that you don't use root um, for security reasons and that you restrict the access that deploy has so that it can only um, deploy your app and um, stop and start it. So deploy2 is the folder that we're going to put things in, var www application, and deploy via is, uh, it has certain um, methods that it uses to deploy stuff, and remote cache what it does is it actually checks out your, um, your source code repository into a cache copy, and then it copies it over. So then the next time you check out, it just uh, does a get pull instead of, you know, a full change. Now, one other thing that we need to do is we actually need to set up a task to bundle the gems. Now, I am aware that the bundle bundler gem actually has a task for this, and you can build it in and stuff, but uh, I, I'm using this so that I can demonstrate um, how to deploy um, or how to set up a task and how to set it to run before or after the deploy. So basically, here, all it does is you just use run, and it'll just run that command. So it'll change directories and then it'll run bundle install vendor gems. Now you have to do it that way because um, each command is run completely separately. So if you put in a command to change directory and another one to bundle install, bundle install will occur in your base directory. Now if you look, I did an after deploy and then I called our deploy bundle gems. Um, what that does is it says after the deploy task, um, run the bundle gems task. And then we're gonna do another one here that after bundling jams, we want it to restart the server. Um, and this will just restart passenger, that's all it does. So then if we go ahead and do a cap deploy setup, what that does is it just sets up the directories that we need for our cap deploy. And that way then we can just come through and do a cap deploy. And again, I'm using bundle exec because, you know, I bundled it with my stuff. And uh, there you have it. It, it, it ran, but it got an error. Now, here's the thing is um, I have Ruby Enterprise installed and the reason that it had a problem was because it wasn't executing my bash RC file, which sets the path. So I, the only way I found to fix it was to actually explicitly set the path on the bundle command. And then when I did that, you'll see here that it actually executes and runs through properly. Um, so there you go, you can see that it's uh, now doing the vendor gems, it's not running through quite as fast, and um, you know we can actually uh, see it install all the gems and do all the work. Now one thing that you may want to do here is actually symlink this folder, and what it'll do then is it'll symlink it and then try and install the gems and see that they're already there, and then you'll be all set up and ready to go. Now let's go ahead and connect to the rubyfreelancers.com server. And um, what we'll see here if we go to var www.rubyfreelancers.com 
is uh, we'll see a couple of folders here. We'll see um, current, releases, and shared. Now, current, um, if we go ahead and list the contents of this directory, it turns out is just a symlink to one of the folders in releases. And then you, if you check in releases, you'll see that there's a release for every one of the um, every one of the times that I've deployed uh, successfully to this. Um, we'll go into current here. You can see that it actually did create the vendor folder. And uh, you know, if you look in gems, what you'll find is you'll find that there's a Ruby folder, and that's set up just like your regular Ruby root in wherever you're at. New Relic is the leading provider of application performance management tools for Ruby and Java applications. Thousands of companies use New Relic RPM to monitor, troubleshoot, and optimize applications deployed either in the cloud or in dedicated hosting environments. RPM Lite is free, fully supported, unlimited time version available at www.newrelic.com. All the leading Rails companies use New Relic including 37 Signals, AT&T Interactive, Shopify, Our Stage, IGN, and lots more. This episode is sponsored by Jumpstart Lab. Jumpstart Lab offers private and corporate training in Ruby, Rails, and related technologies. They're experienced educators, not just good developers, and will get you going quickly. Courses can be scheduled in the U.S. or around the world and curriculum customized to meet your needs. Learn more at jumpstartlab.com. That was wonderful! Bravo! I loved that! Oh, it was great! Well, it was pretty good. Well, it wasn't bad. Well, there were parts of it that weren't very good, it though. It could have been a lot better. I didn't really like it. It was pretty terrible. It was bad. It was awful! It was terrible! Get him away! Hey, boo! Boo!